Hey guys, Captain here. Today I'm bringing you another LEGO Techniques video. Um, while I was uh, thinking of ideas to, to make for a video this week, I realized I actually don't have all that many pieces available in my um, apartment. And I also, you know, it takes a little while to for pieces to ship when I make custom builds like the LEGO Pokemon, stuff like that. I do have some pretty exciting builds planned for the near future, so I really hope you guys are looking forward to that, especially if you've been uh, longer time fans of the channel. But this techniques video is one that um, I think is, is pretty interesting. I haven't found too many uses for this myself, although I've definitely found some, and it's pretty advanced. I hope you guys can appreciate it, because um, I think you can do some really fancy stuff with it. Today we're going to be talking about um, angles and the hypotech, which is short for the mirrored hypotenuse technique. Now, so most of LEGO is you know, based around right angles. Um, even though we have hinges and stuff, a lot of uh, plate building is still confined to, to the grid. Um, now, if you knew a little bit about math, you're probably familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, and you've probably at some point heard of the 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? So what we've got is if we take four studs by three studs at a right angle, then this hypotenuse is exactly five studs. Um, and so some implications of this uh, can be as follows. So here I'll demo uh, something that I did for the, my LEGO Windfall Island build. Um, if we were to take a plate, we were say, let's say place some studs down and just count out uh, five studs, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Maybe place some tile out here somewhere. All right, then if we were to take two one by four plates, we could angle them in such a way they will get a perfect right angle in between them. If you wanted, you could connect these, right? You could place down another plate above it, or something like that, that's a perfect connection. And the reason this works out is because, sure enough, we've created a three, four, five triangle, right? We've got four studs going along this side, right? Three studs going along this side, and that leaves five studs here as we count it out. So that's, you know, a pretty basic technique still in the scheme of things. But it's something neat you can do, um, you know, if you elevate your plates a little bit, right? You've got some real, you know, unusual angles here, non-standard stuff. Now, let's try something even fancier than this. And the reason one might want to expand beyond this is because this is still limited by needing to find um, integer length right triangles, right? And so the size of these starts to blow up pretty fast. Now if you have some pieces like this, these kinds of um, hinge plates, you can sort of skirt around this and make a lot of smaller or more unique angles without needing that many studs. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If we take two plates of the same length, here I'm using one by sixes for an example, and we connect them like this with this swiveling hinge, and then we place another connection at the end here. What we've basically done is create like a four point rotation. We can connect these with a plate and we've got a very stable shape that gives us a unique triangle, right? And we can create lots of different angles with not that many uh, studs required. If we were to, for example, take this apart and replace one by four plate with a one by eight plate, we would get completely different angles, you know? Or uh, I don't have, you know, a five length plate, but we could just have it hang off a bit and use three length and again get a whole new set of angles. And so you can create uh, triangular shapes or angled shapes uh, with not that many studs like this, and this could be pretty useful for something like roofing, something like spaceships, uh, that sort of thing. As a fun fact, the um, old school um, Ultimate Collector Series Star Destroyer set from the early 2000s actually tried to use um, basically integer right triangles and a technique kind of similar to this, but they, uh, they approximated a little wrong on the hypotenuse, off by maybe like half a stud on a massive, massive triangle. And so for that reason, that's why actually the plates sometimes pop off of that set because there's a little bit of stress placed on them because the math isn't perfect. But here the math is always right. And the cleverness of this technique, why it's called the mirrored hypotenuse, is because this is an isosceles triangle, 
right? Meaning that the angle bisector here is the perpendicular bisector here. So you can split this into two um, equal right triangles, right? And so there's an implicit hypotenuse here, and its length, you know, who cares what its length is? It's a silly length, but the upshot is that you get to create lots of different angles. This technique actually can show up in some other ways, and this one took me a while to wrap my head around. So now, let's take a set of pieces like this. This one is based on some of these hinge bricks. Something we can do is, let's place down a plate here and two bricks here. Now recall that bricks um, are built in a five to six ratio, and an upshot of this means that um, two plates or two studs worth of width is the same as five plates worth of height. So what we can do is we can place some hinge bricks, some of these hinges here. Actually, I'll put them aside for now. But uh, let's take something like two headlight pieces and then stick a plate on top of them and then a brick on top of that and then two more headlight pieces and in the back of one of these, let's place a one by two plate. Okay, and then what we've got going on here is notice if we count the studs, basically from ending here, we've got seven plates worth of height. One, three from this brick, three more from the headlights. So seven plates worth. If we were to place these hinge bricks in the holes back here, would it surprise you that this is actually going to be a perfect fit? So what's going on here is here we have two plates, uh, two studs worth of difference, which is equal to five plates, and then five plates worth of difference in the height. Okay, so the hypotenuse here, okay, that's going to be five squared plus five squared. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. We don't have to square root it. The point is that by a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right, this hypotenuse is going to be square root of 50. And here we've got seven plates, one plate. So we've got 49 plus one, seven squared plus one squared. And again, that gives us 50. So because that's equal, these hypotenuses are equal, that's why this is going to rest perfectly. Pretty neat. I think my last techniques video, I talked about various roofing techniques. If you wanted to mix a very sturdy roof, this could certainly help you using um, hypotenuse techniques like this. You know, because this, this is not gonna budge. And then one more, we can get even crazier than this. If we take a plate, place down a two by two here, count off four studs, four studs, and place two bricks up here. And then let's place some turnstiles down and some more hinge bricks on these turnstiles. And then the amazing thing we're going to conclude from this is that we can actually layer a uh, two by eight plate across this and it'll fit just right There we go we pop this in properly, but There we go and Why does this work well, that's because four studs by four studs um, And I'll use studs for the math here it gives us uh, four squared plus four squared. So uh, 32 is the square of this hypotenuse going diagonally. Here again, we have um, five plates of difference. That's equal to two studs. So uh, 32 plus two squared, that gives us 36. And then sure enough, 36 squared. How many studs of difference is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six squared is 36. So this works out perfectly. I hope you guys enjoyed the technique. I think it's really neat. I think you can do um, some pretty cool stuff with it. You can make a lot of custom angles that are very, very sturdy and that don't involve illegal techniques. They won't damage your bricks. Um, and with that, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please uh, like the video, comment, subscribe, send this to your friends, and I'll see you guys next time.